today's topic is on anal rectal malformations, ARM under pediatric surgery. So anal rectal malformation is not describing one condition, but more a spectrum of abnormalities that can involve the rectum or the anus. Okay, so these are not only imperfect anus, but a spectrum of abnormalities. The incidence, it happens in about one to four uh, births per 5,000 births, and it is slightly more common in males. When we see an anal rectal malformation, we have to think about the other malformations that are commonly associated with ARM, and those are your vectoral abnormalities. Vectoral abnormalities include your vertebral defect, anal rectal malformation or other atresias, cardiac anomalies, tracheal esophageal fistula and esophageal atresia, renal and limb defects. So with your anal rectal malformations, it can be classified largely into two groups um, based on their location or yes, the location of the lesion. Either it can be a high malformation or a low malformation. When we speak about the high malformations, um, those are more common in males compared to in females. The type of fistula you will find in a heart for malformation would be your rectourinary fistula, so between the rectum and the uh, urinary apparatus, which could be the bladder. Meconium is visible at the tip of the penis because of the meconium passing by the urethral orifice. On your perennial inspection, you won't find fistula to the perineum or a fistula opening there. So everything would seem normal on a perennial inspection. On clinical examination or clinical signs, you will see that there is a history of bowel obstruction after one to two days of birth um, with abdominal distension due to the lack of meconium or small amount of meconium. Tiny or absent rectourinary fistula allows for little stools. With surgical management, you would go for the three-stage procedure. The three-stage procedure in stage one, you would first do a colostomy to relieve the obstruction. Secondly, four weeks later, um, when the patient is stable, you could do a colostogram, which is a distal lupogram, and then a posterior sagittal anorectoplasty, which is also known as PSOP. And if needed, uh, anal dilatation can also be done. And lastly, you would do a colostomy reversal, which would include anastomosis of the remaining gut to the anus. With low malformations, these are more common in females. The type of fistula you will find here is your rectovestibular fistula. The meconium would be visible in the vagina. And with your perennial inspection, you would be able to find a fistula that opens to the vestibulum or perineum. Clinical science, there isn't any bowel obstruction because they are passing sufficient amounts of stool via this fistula. And the surgical management for patients with low malformation, no colostomy is needed. However, they would be needing an anoplasty or anorectoplasty shortly after birth. So when a patient comes into the ward and you're, you have diagnosed them with your anorectal malformation, what are the initial management steps? The initial management is to treat this as a bowel obstruction. Um, for this, you would give milparaz, a nasogastric tube on free drainage to, for GID compression, IV fluids to maintain your normal hydration, as well as remember to keep the patient warm. Here, in your initial management, you would also look for your other abnormalities. Uh, those are referring to your vectoral abnormalities. And here, you would also refer to a pediatric surgeon where they will take it from there work up in a tertiary hospital. So firstly, the clinician would do a clinical evaluation of the perineum as well as the buttocks. So for example, here you would be looking for a flat bottom sign and with experience, you can determine if this is a high or low malformation using the above table as a guide. Secondly, you can do an invertogram uh, if you are still in doubt whether this is a high or a low lesion, but this should only be undertaken in a tertiary hospital where there are sufficient resources. 
And lastly, you have to rule out your associated congenital malformations, your vectoral malformations. Um, this would include your baby gram, which looks for bony abnormalities, as well as your screening sonar for your heart, kidney, abdomen, as well as brain. In conclusion, in a newborn child, do not discharge before the baby has passed meconium, very importantly. And meconium does not prove that there is an anus uh, because the meconium can be coming from the penis or the vagina. So do not forget to check the anus, whether it is present or absent, whether it is in the normal position and whether there has a normal configuration.